I just had a discussion about great circle routes and it turns out that those can potentially be a little bit confusing and I think that's due mostly to the way they describe the navigation documents and such. I'm going to quote from the Smithsonian's uh, time and navigation page here. Great circle route. The shortest distance between two points on a globe is not always a straight line, it's an arc called a great circle. This complicates long distance navigation. Rather than stay on a constant heading, pilots must regularly adjust their course to stay on the arc. The great circle effect is most dramatic near the poles." End quote. And this can create the impression that in order to fly a great circle route, the pilot has to continuously steer the plane to the left or to the right, in other words, turn, in order to stay on it. But that's not actually what this means. Uh, the great circle route, the property, the unique property that they have is that, you, that it's the one type of route where you do not have to steer left or right, where you're actually staying, flying in a straight line or as straight as it is possible to fly on a sphere. Uh, so the confusion is because even though you're not turning left or right, the compass needle that you have in your cockpit or wherever turns underneath you because the compass needle is aligned to magnetic field lines and those emanate from the poles, so they are radial. In other words, they are changing as you fly on the straight line, not because you're turning, but because these radial lines make different angles with the straight line you're flying. And that is a little bit tough to digest, I guess, so the best way, I think, is to, uh, to try it out and actually see what happens. And fortunately, I have software to do that. Here's a globe, and this yellow line is a great circle flight route from Johannesburg, South Africa, to Sydney, Australia. And as you can clearly see, this is, by the way, is about 12,000 kilometers long. As you can clearly see, uh, this route does change compass heading throughout. It starts out in Johannesburg in a southeast direction and it ends up in Sydney in a northeast direction. So you're changing pretty much 90 degrees of compass heading during the flight, but my point is that you're not actually turning uh, because it's a straight line. If you look at this and turn it so that it's uh, directly facing straight up, you can see that it's actually not turning left or right. I can make the globe transparent so we can see it a little bit better. There it is, and it doesn't turn. Um, but still, this is still a bit hard to take, so let us actually travel. And I have a traveling tool in here that's sort of like a first-person navigation traveling tool, WSAD, mouse to look around. Uh, so I'm going to place us on the globe. I have prepared this because it's a little bit fiddly to get there. So now we are standing exactly uh, on uh, in Johannesburg, and we are facing southeast along the route. So you see that uh, point there, which is pointing where we are going. You have a compass on top. And again, I can use WASD to move around. I can use the mouse to look up, down, left, right. And I'm going to show you that I can travel along this route without ever actually turning. I'm going to reload this. Okay, and then turn on the navigation tool again and go. So now I want you to look at two things. Of course, you have to kind of take my word for that I'm not steering, but all right. Uh, I want you to keep a look that we are always going to be on the yellow line. And I want to also have you take a look at the compass up there. Right now you can see we are at 135 degrees, which is pretty much directly southeast. I'm going to start walking, and you're seeing how I'm not turning and we are staying on the yellow line, but the compass heading is changing. We are slowly turning northward. Again, against the compass, not in real life. Now we are at exactly 90 degrees east, so we are at the, most, at the southernmost point of this route. The south pole is directly to the right now, and then we keep going. And now the compass heading changes again more northward, and again we are not turning. The compass heading changes because the lines of uh, the compass lines are um, radii coming out of the South Pole in this case. And here we are in Sydney, and you can see we are now at approximately 50 degrees, so we are facing northeast, but we haven't turned the entire time. Um, to prove it to you, let's go backwards. Just do the same thing, just pressing the other key, not turning. Compass direction is changing again. We are not turning left or right at all. And we just passed 90 degrees. And here we are in Johannesburg. And that is it. Thank you very much for watching.